week. Uh, let's get started. It's time for... Perfect. To the weekend. Whew, we made it. All right, Tyrese. Now look, Black Ty. We have known each other for many years, and we've been in and out of each other's lives, troublesome for as many years as we've known one another. But I can't hold my tongue. So I guess we're gonna be fighting again. Well, he caused it. Another social, <laughs> another social media feud. Tyrese announced that, his, uh, uh, that he's doing a rap album. Now, mind you, he's an R&B singer. I did not know that Black Tie could rap. However, if you get the right person, you know, to, to write you your rhymes and the right producer to do the production, um, anybody could do it these days. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> So he's gonna do this, uh, this rap album um, as a tribute to um, some of his favorite uh, hip hop artists and the spirit of hip hop, the spirit of hip hop. Then he uh, posted a Photoshop picture of Young Jock saying, this, I know, I was like, what the wig is going on? It's Photoshop, it's Photoshop. But he says, this is the new image of hip hop why is this okay? Like he's coming to save hip hop. <clears throat> Tyrese, don't you have more pressing matters like going to court regarding your 10 year old daughter and the allegations of alleged abuse right now? And Tyrese, you know, now that you've, um, anyway, young jock clap back. Take a look at this. From one black man to another man, you know, I don't think you had to take shots at me to promote your album, man. I think you're success successful enough to where you should just been promoting yourself, man. Maybe you should create a timeline or a collage of all the many great things you've done. You know what I'm saying? I'm always trying to take shots at a Photoshop picture of me. And the winner is Young Jock. He's very entertaining on Love and Hip Hop, Young Jock is, and um, he answered Tyrese in a very grown manner, as opposed to all the rah-rah. Good for you, Jock. Yeah. And all of this recent Tyrese stuff, I believe, stems from the fact that the Fast and Furious was originally um, a movie to center around three characters. Um, Paul Walker, um, Vin Diesel, and Tyrese. But Tyrese was the third. But still, in a franchise, there's nothing wrong with being number three. Oh, heck, I'd be number 10. <laughs> as long as I'm in the building and getting those checks. So Tyrese is, I guess, mad that The Rock who ended up coming into the Fast and Furious after it was established, ended up getting his spin-off movie, which will probably be a franchise movie because people love The Rock. And Tyrese, what are you doing? You've, you've got a new wife, you've got a 10-year-old daughter in distress, you've got a mad baby's mother. Uh, you know, you're about to lose your franchise job at the Fast and Furious, because if I were them, I would um, keep what you already have uh, um, already filmed with them and promote that next movie. But Tyrese is out. Look, look, you're trouble. You're trouble. Okay. Do you guys like those cookies, um, that pastry with, um, it's with the green? and the yellow and the pink, and it's wrapped in chocolate. It's called an Italian rainbow. Yes. Oh. 
I had three <laughs> at lunchtime from the Kardashians bakery. No, not the Kardashians. Now, here's the story. The Kardashians are fighting with a bakery in Taylor, Michigan, about 23 miles outside of Detroit, Taylor, Michigan. They are Armenian, this Kardashian family, but the family uh, does their last name, you know, on record with a C, not an S. You see, this is how Kardashians, the ones we know, spell their name. But the Kardashian bakery uh, spells their name that way as well. But the Kardashian bakery people, the family, in real life, this S is a C. Are you upset? I'm not upset. Like, capitalize off anything that you can these days. Are you serious? I've never even heard of Taylor, Michigan, so. Uh, but this is a way for people in Taylor, Michigan, you know, you walk down the street, you say, hey, Kardashian Bakery, and you go in there and you have a beautiful Monte Cristo or something. I've already placed my order if I was ever there. No, I lie to you not. What did I want, Norman? Oh, you got the menu. Oh, okay, okay. I saw the I saw the menu. For the appetizer, I want the arncini. Arncini. Well, it's something beautiful and delicious, and it um, rice balls. Right, right. The, the rice, top left, yeah. Rice I think balls. That's what it is. Rice <laughs> balls, and I'll bring my own hot sauce. <laughs> then, then no, no. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. You know, I'm a fatty. Then I want the crushed lentil soup. I love a lentil soup, but hold the cilantro. Cause there's some places that put the cilantro in there and don't try to fool me. <laughs> All right, then while I'm eating the lentil soup, I will be waiting for my margarita pizza with olives, capers, and anchovies. I'm a salt, I'm a savory, not a sweet. And then afterwards, I'll take one more of those Italian. <laughs> yeah. Look, I, I don't know why the Kardashians are mad at them and they want to sue. I have no idea why. I feel as though it's smart to capitalize on the name. They are authentically Armenian. And for the record, uh, the dad is like the third cousin of the late Robert Kardashian. Aww. But they're not doing that. See, family, this is what I would do if I were you. All right, first of all, I think the lawsuit is stupid. Kardashians, the, the, the other Kardashians, the famous ones, they have enough on their mind, they'll drop this lawsuit. They're not gonna badger you in Taylor, Michigan. Really? Um, but don't put their pictures on the wall and really start to capitalize on that, okay? You just keep that name out there and you pay for the biggest, brightest neon sign so the entire Taylor knows Kardashian is here. Yeah. You see? But remember, no pictures of the real Kardashians. None of them at all. All right. Um, Anna Faris and Chris Pratt. Now, we talked about this. Everybody said um, they, are, they announced their separation back in August. Um, Anna has already moved on. She's 40 years old. Oh, oh police. <laughs> A girl after my own heart. You don't let grass grow under your feet. It doesn't mean she's in love, it just means she needs an escort for dinner and maybe a little, you know, um, back cracking. <laughs> so she's 40, she's 40 years old and she's reportedly dating this 47-year-old guy. He's a cinematographer. Now, she met him while they were filming the um, Goldie Hawn classic, The Redoing Overboard. Didn't you love that movie? They're redoing it, and Anna's the star, and he's the cinematographer, and she fell in love, or not love. I'm not even gonna put it there. <laughs> she fell in something with him. <laughs> into bed, into a bowl of soup, I have no idea. All I know is that she's moved on, and I'm glad for her, and it's really, really weird, and yeah, guys, there is a double standard. I'm talking to guys as in men, guys. There is a double standard. When a woman meets somebody new, I don't know if this is you, this is me. When a woman meets somebody new, I'm happy for her. Like, okay, she's gonna be okay. She's not, all, as long as she's not all in love and then suddenly pregnant. 
Like, you know, you have a good time popping and locking and zipping and zilling. <laughs> But when a man meets somebody new so quickly, because remember, they just announced in August, if this was Chris meeting somebody new, I don't know about you, I'd be calling him a pig. <laughs> like, like, what are you doing and why are you dating so soon? Uh, leaving, you know, my Anna and they got a couple of kids. You know, well, one, the same yeah. difference. <laughs> <laughs> the same difference, you know. Um, I'm surprised. Look how he's, oh, he's holding him like, like a puppet, though. <laughs> he's holding him like a, he's holding him like a, like a puppet. <laughs> but in my opinion, and I told you, this is what I, my thought is. When she met him, she was the bigger star, and he was um, a bit overweight and not as popular in Hollywood. Then all of a sudden, he lost the weight. He started going to the gym. See, uh huh, and now, uh huh. He started going to the gym and decided that he was ready to get out, out there and, you know, and zip it and do it. And yes, if he was dating right now, I'd be pissed. But I'm not pissed at her, and I realize it's a double standard, but oh well, oh well. So, OJ. who's 70, was spotted at the Las Vegas DMV. Uh-huh. Well, now, now look, no, no, I can tell you how this could be hot. If you take away the knife. I can tell you how this could be hot, right? 70, full head of hair. We already saw his face at Mickey D's. He doesn't have the wrinkles and stuff. He's still got a good chin. But the visor is old man. You've been in jail too long. Nobody wears visors but bingo queens. And, but I am, I am telling you, ladies and gentlemen, if he removes the visors and maybe doesn't tug on his socks so hard. <laughs> you know? Not bad looking for a person accused of killing. <laughs> All right, so he's gonna get his license, and you know he'll probably go and pick up a Bronco, white, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and you will be brought back to a time in history. All right. So, were you a fan of Breaking Bad? Well, you know, I've seen it a couple of times. You know, I wasn't a fan, but I was there, present. Um, it ended in 2013, and fans are still showing up at the house where they filmed. Well, they didn't actually film inside the house. The thing is, in Hollywood, they filmed the outside of a house, and then they... By the way, my original last name was Williamson. Going back to, um, who were we talking about? The Kardashians? Kardashians, yeah. Right. My great, great grandparents' last name was Williamson. And then they shortened it to Williams. But if I wanted to use Williamson, I would. Even though I'm a Williams hunter. But anyway. <laughs> All right. Anyway, here's the house. The outside of the house where they do Breaking Bad. Okay. And there's a scene in the show where the main character, Walter White, throws an entire pizza on his roof. Do you remember this? Yes. Okay. So there are actual people who live in this house, and they loan their house out for, you know, a pittance for the show to film. And at the time, you know, I guess the owners were thinking, you know, okay, a cable show, we could use a few extra bucks. Hey, Marge, can we do it? <laughs> yeah, Homer, tell him we can do it. All right, where's my check? All right, the show ends up being a big hit. The owners are now claiming that people, even though they haven't been on the air since 2013, line up all day to take photos and throw pizzas <laughs> at their home. <laughs> so now the owners um, have built a six-foot fence to keep people out. But my thought is, 
You know, if you're that invested in a TV show, a six foot fence isn't gonna stop you because you've got a little bit of a tick, you know? And I don't know why you all even loaned your house out to begin with, whether it's a small show or a large show. I remember when they were doing, true story, when they were doing um, Cadillac uh, rec records with Beyonce? Yeah, with okay. Beyonce. When they were doing that uh, movie, the particular house that we lived in at the time in our neighborhood, we, we were amongst other of our neighbors that were asked, can we use your house to film? I'm like, oh hell, that, what, th this is not even a conversation. And furthermore, if the neighbors do it, I'm gonna throw pizzas at their house. <laughs> no, no, you don't loan your house out unless you expect some backlash. Like, can you imagine the people that own the Brady Bunch house? <laughs> well, I know people that know them, the people that own the actual house. And um, yeah, it's hella ridiculous. <laughs> eh. You gotta figure out a better way to make money. So, so, you know, last year, Michelle had her biopic and it was a huge ratings success. And this Sunday, the movie airs again. She's in the process of celebrating one year, um, you know, later. And I wanted to find out how she's doing, so I had an hour-long interview with her, and here's a little sneak peek of what you'll see from the interview. So back to Suge, you would go see him. You put up with this for six or seven six years. Six or seven years. Conjugal visits with Suge were, like, hard. I was absolutely scared to death. Who wants to go into prison? I'd never been in prison to go stay for three or four days. I had to be on like Vicodin just to try and get through. So then of course I realized that I was probably a little addicted to those and it took a while to get off of those. Aren't there other men in Compton? Yeah. You are there the queen of Compton. Of but there were another man who was watching another man treat, mistreat a woman like Shug did and say, okay, let me rescue her. So there was so much to talk about and She's actually here. Michelle, come on. <laughs> and here we go again. Good. I like your girl placement. It's pretty. It's really pretty. It's, yes, it's pretty. All right, so here's Michelle, and, uh, and so. When last we talked with the interview that will be on TV, and I'll let you know the date and time in just a moment, but you told me you had never watched your own movie. I still haven't. Well, Wendy, it was closure for me. I think that was it. I, I, I had to film it. It was seven weeks of filming, and I was there on almost every shot until I got to a point where I couldn't be there on the, the scenes where it was abusive. But I think I, I can put it to rest now. I don't want to see it again and have to go and be critique being hit and beat and, and go through that emotion. I'm okay. What about your kids? What do they say? They, my daughter loves the movie. She learns so much from How it. How old is she? She'll be 15 in November. Mm. And she's, yes. Oh. oh, there they are. <laughs> and then it's my son. who will be 27 in February. And, um, and your son is with Dre and your daughter and is with Shug. Shug. Yes, and they're well-adjusted kids for now. I don't know if that's going to change as they get older because they, they're, they're going through it with me. But right now they're doing good. And as far as the movie goes, I just hope that women can look at it and take something from it, even though people ask me, why did it take you so long to do this? Well, it took me long enough to get it wrapped around my head that this was uh, you know, suppressed in, my, in the back of my conscious. So I'm hoping that it does something for women today and like it did for me today. Because you're very open about abuse and you're doing a lot of work uh, with, uh, with women who are in abusive situations, which is terrific. Yes. Have either Shug or Dre ever publicly apologized to you? No, no. Well, Dre, um, Dre has never, and I don't really want an apology. I just want the why, the explanation. I don't want an apology. I want the why. So if he ever decides to do that, that would be great. But I want to let him know I'm okay, you know, but, it, but that would be great. Shug apologized immediately because, remember, he had to take me to the hospital to get it 
black back in place. He probably did it so they wouldn't take him to jail. Oh, now he's in jail anyway. Well, anyway. <laughs> but Lisa can't blame me. Well, okay, so now you're working on an album. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, back in the studio. Finally! Yeah. Uh-huh. Finally. Are finally. they gonna be all sad songs? Oh no, no, no. That's okay. why I chose not to write it all myself because you guys would have been depressed. Okay. Okay. So no, the, the song is called Get Up, and you know, and there's writers, okay? Because okay. I what because what I was writing was, you know, oh sad. my god. Oh, it was horrible. It was hung jury all over again. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they never heard of Hung Jury album 98. Ugh. Depressing piece of work. Yes, uh, we don't like depressing music here. Oh, we like to no. dip it and zoo it. <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, <clears throat> when last we talked, when we were um, filming the interview, and I'll give you guys the date and the time in a moment, I asked you who's better in bed, Dre or Suge? And you didn't answer. Could you just answer now? Come on, girl. <laughs> Well, you know, that's kind of a hard question to ask. But I'm gonna tell you why, women, because it's no quicker way to really get at a man's manhood than to say one ex was better than the first or the next, right? I mean... Okay, who's better? <laughs> one, one's, in, one's in jail and cannot get you, and the other one is married and a businessman and won't get you. So come on, who was better? Okay, I'll say this, one was romantic. I'll say Suge was romantic and Dre was let's go. Okay. Is that, is that a good way to put yeah. it? Like, yes. Thank you so much for coming. Well, wait, Wendy, can we just do this one thing before I go? What are we doing? Well, because you, I just learned what clap back mean. I didn't really know, so I finally learned what it is. But, and then I thought I'm a bad clap backer. So, <laughs> it made you laugh, right? So can you have your audience say bad clap backer because they can't do it without laughing. I can't even hold my, because it makes this, just ask them to say it because I don't know how to say it. What? <laughs> Really, you can't say bad clapbacker without smiling. So, okay, it's bad clapbacker. Bad clapbacker. <laughs> you can't. And if you try, these muscles, you gotta let the muscles are But I love her anyway. Right? Michelle is still standing. It premieres Sunday night at 10 on Lifetime. We've got more great show for you, everybody. R&B group 112 is back together, and they're performing right here on the Wendy stage. But up next. She's got to have it star. Dewanda Weiss is here. So grab a snack and come on back.